Hey guys, how's it going? It's Sexy Cat, and today we're going to talk about the design of a game I'm working on. I'm going to play some music off my SoundCloud, which is soundcloud.com slash 60-cat. And uh, I've written most of these, but some of these are uh, revoicing of some classical music. That I like to have kind of like chip to they call it chip tunes, 8-bit. It's kind of the genre. Other people have done it where you make some sound something like 16, like a 16-bit video game. Uh, most of these songs are made for prototypes, game prototypes I've made, which I've been making over like eight years now. So the current game that I'm working on, which is called Aegean, and it's a multiplayer game, and it's uh, economy simulator. It's kind of the closest title I could put to it, uh, and I have a lot of social things that I want integrated into it. A lot of it is going to be based upon a living system where this world kind of lives on its own and changes on its own while you're not even there. And also you can have your character do things while you're not there as well. And you can control multiple characters. Um, but this is just what I have right now, which is very, very basic. But the most important part about this prototype is that I've overcome the hurdle of making something online. So I've been able to make put this on a server and it runs on a server, had multiple people connect to it with good latency. So the the very technical part of it that I've basically the hardest part of the game I've already accomplished. So now it's more of like just gamey stuff, which is graphics and actual design of the game to fully flesh out and uh, uh, the co the rest of the code. But uh, I may explain it I'm going to explain it, but it's going to sound more kind of complicated to have everything functioning. But in a way, it's not that complicated, but I'll do my best to kind of demonstrate. So, I want to show another prototype I have of this game. So, this one's a not online one, but this was just something I made early just because I want to simulate um, in commerce, I guess you could say. I mean, this prototype wasn't very far along, but one thing it does do that's really cool is that it generates all these names generates a bunch of just random names and of places and characters and of different races um, and then they go in these shuttles between towns so in a way this is this helps also illustrate the game in a way I want there to be these kind of like independent islands I'm gonna have to turn that down a little bit wrong screen so there's kind of like these cities these floating island cities and you have to transport in between them and kind of characters run on their own and they do they have their own kind of independence where they want to eat they want to survive but they also want to fill their their bars like a health not just health bar but um like needs for entertainment and maybe they have their own social kind of needs and stuff like that so in a way, you're trying to take care of the characters you have, but also do the things that you want to do personally. So all these islands are the same size, and this is just for demonstrative purposes. I was just trying to make these little networks. Right now in this little simulation, I think characters go on these shuttles. There's a, a pilot for the shuttle. Um, and if they're hungry, they try to find a route that's the closest food source, a place that has like a restaurant. That's in this little simulation. Um, I'm going to go into Illustrator to demonstrate everything else that I want to explain about the design for this game. So I'm continually working on it. Um, I've been actually designing this game for a very, very long time. The first Genesis came from, I want to say... I have to say from Star Trek, I think. I want to create, like, a place where you can have ships and you can, um, let me get my pen. Like, I want to, like, space fighting, but inside are, like, corridors, and to actually function, run the ship, you have to, you have to kind of, like, run around it. There, if the engines get blown up, you have to go down in there, kind of, like, fix it. There's all these mechanical aspects of the ship that can uh, can go wrong. So that's kind of where it started. 
And then I, I got to the area of wanting to make organisms and, and, and different physics systems than typical. Shoot, I really screwed the pooch on this. Oh my gosh, whatever. So, where it is now is, is definitely a different place. One big thing about this game is that it's completely peaceful, and I've it's something it's a design element I've like toyed with both sides with very strongly. But I think it's going to be completely pacifist game. It's not like all my games are going to be like that. That's just I'm going to commit to that on this game. I feel pretty strongly about it. And even it's even almost like a design challenge you could even say because everybody has such harsh confrontation in their games. Um. You can equate the docility to, like, Club Penguin. So, I mean, there's a lot of social stuff like that in this game where you can customize your character, give them, um, find clothes that are rare or special or something like that, and, and buy and sell them and trade them and stuff. There would be a limited supply of them. Um, they're all going to be, like, kind of anthropomorphic characters, like characters that are part animal, basically. So... You can have like a tail, cat ears, but maybe different eyes or something like that. Like, I've decided not to be strict to like if you're a feline, you have to all have all feline features. I'm, I, I'm making it that any anybody can breed with anybody. Oh yeah, that's that's a big part of, about this game is, like genetics. You can't just design whatever character you want. You actually, you have available characters that will kind of accept you. And if you make them happy, you know, they'll do what you want. But if you don't make them happy, then they're not going to follow what you do. But you could, like, interchange bunny ears with, like, a, f a fox tail or something like that. They're just kind of going to be mismatches of, of creatures. Which is kind of funny. I think of, like, VR chat with this, where in VR chat, you have just people making up the craziest stuff. I mean, granted, there's a lot of cat people and, like, wolf people. People can mine features all the time and stuff like that. And uh, it also unhinges something where I don't have to make a complete like char character. So what I can do, the graphics... Okay, a big thing in my design is about simplicity. So, um... And that's, with pro that's a big thing in programming, too, is you want to make things as simple and smooth and efficient as possible. Um, but you have, to, you have to balance that with everything else, so... Like with drawing, you're balancing it with detail, simplicity with detail, and complexity, like multiple frames compared to s single frames. So I think like for running, I'm going to have like three frames. I think everything's going to have a two frame like bounce animation, like an ears, ears on a head. We'll just have one frame where they're kind of tilted down, so it kind of bounces when you walk. So it'll be a little bit of animation, but very minimal, but it'll be just that extra touch to kind of give it a little extra cuteness. So basically what I can do is I can just make these ears and then on the same head make the different ears and just do the two animations and then your your character can just be the conglomerate of all those features that you need. So the unique characters and breeding is kind of a thing but I'm gonna make it very difficult to have more characters. Like they have to like like each other and I'm also going to do no gender. So you can have like eyelashes. There's just no gender. It doesn't exist in this world. So I mean, it looks feminine to us, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything in the game. So and breeding is not having sex. It's just like a ceremony, like a love ceremony. So there's like magic. There's magic in this game. So you probably have like two characters that already are fond of each other. Um, and then they create like an egg, which is either like a diamond or something like that. And then when a real person wants to, like by, by a real person, like a real player wants that character, they'll have kind of like a selection of eggs that are already available and they could see the parents and then they could choose the features of the parents. Like if the, if one of them has bunny ears and cat ears, they can choose either to have bunny ears or cat ears. And that's the choice up to the, um, whoever, cho whoever's choosing that character. But you have to kind of gain a karma to be able to incarnate in any of these characters. And you'll start with one character who also needs to earn, you need to earn their trust, but uh, eventually you can have tons of characters. And they'll kind of independently be working and stuff. They'll be doing their thing. 
and maybe you you zoom in and you check them out or you see them from the, from like the menu and you're just kind of seeing their stats uh, and then you can even be not playing and they're doing things so I, I've always wanted that with a game especially like playing like Minecraft or something like that there's tedious things that you don't want to have to do yourself you're like oh if I just had like an automatic robot do that for me and that's kind of what I want to implement in this and it kind of makes it exciting when you come back later you're not there but things have been changing but there's a balance with that uh, I think you have to earn at, like off AFK hours basically by working in the game or getting good karma in the game there's so many tangents I can go on this game I'm just trying to think of the best way but yeah there's gonna be like ships and you go inside the ships and they need to operate but there's gonna be no like pirates no way to steal anything no way to hurt anybody uh, but you could crash a ship that would be the only bad thing that could happen and yeah maybe you could intentionally crash a ship but then it's like a lot of resources lost and I think it'll give you bad karma so it's worth talking about the karma systems because uh, I think this is a really cool design I'm trying to design the game so there's things called Skinner boxes I'm not gonna go into that you can look that up but basically you can reward a player for all sorts of behavior by the design of the game you can think of like Candy Crush is that cell phone game that's trying so hard to make you buy stuff in game purchases so what does it, it the whole design of the game is to is to build that up to make you have to buy something in game which is really obnoxious really horrible I guess it's, it's inevitable to have happened but uh, I can I can gamify positive things in my game and I think I could do that with the, a, a karma system and so basically there would be like world karma There would be like group, so like factions or like areas, and then individuals, karma. So world karma would be things where you contribute or or do crimes against crimes against the world that'll neg make it negative or make it positive for you. And there would, it would be kind of like a little note on your account, which people can see. They'll be like, "Hey, he did this thing, and he lost this much karma for it." So it's kind of a way to gamify behavior. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're doing this with like Facebook and stuff like that. Um, but hopefully I'm doing it for good and not for evil. I'm, I'm doing it as you're helpful. And then that's why individual is important too. So when you do something good for an individual, they, they have a limited amount of good karma and negative karma that they can dish out. And so if you do something good for them, they might give you good karma. And then it'll kind of rack up on your um, profile. And so if somebody wants you for something they can find they can trust you or it it just makes it easier for you in the game there'll be bonuses in the game for good behavior essentially and yeah groups will kind of be another automatic thing like world karma where individual is from an actual player influencing and so the all the karmas will be listed on your profile when somebody can access your profile and there'll be a little bit of protection for your profile not like anybody can just access it there'll be connections so when you connect with somebody in game <clears throat> you can always type like telepathically connect with them in game and you can there'll be a whole interface for that um, I mean there's so much to talk about in this game oh man it's still going so I mean I guess I haven't even talked about the main meat of the game we're talking about kind of fluffy stuff it is a I mean, you can do whatever with your character. They have to eat to survive. They need a, kind of a place to survive. And then there'll be other things, entertainment, like to add their, to their mood. If their mood is high, then they can function better. And then they actually get a EXP for doing things, like if they're doing cooking because of their work. They also need a job, I guess, because they need to pay for all this stuff. And there's going to be systems where you, about pooling money. That definitely is a concern of mine. Uh, but then again, I'm not going to have you have a million characters at once. But either way, 
as your character does these certain things, they gain levels in it, so they might be like level 5 cooking, which helps them identify ingredients and cook them better, which makes people feel better and last longer, so you could be more valuable, thusly get a, a higher wage. So all these kind of business decisions are made by players, and then the characters just kind of live them out. So you don't have to physically work yourself controlling your character. You can just let him work, and he'll level up and stuff. And then when you want him to go somewhere because so, you want to check out something, then you send him there, and you are kind of embodying them. So yeah, as you gain money, you can then build businesses. You can get whole islands. You make huge manufacturing facilities. You can build huge ships. I mean, yeah, build islands, build manufacturing get fancy stuff send people to go exploring to find really rare stuff new things will be added in to be discovered by specific people a bit one of the things is that blueprints are a thing like to build a certain kind of ship there'll be a certain number of blueprints and you have to have that blueprint in order to build that ship so you can sell it or lease it out so it's just, it's basically like an open world business simulator. It had these people interacting, but there's systems. So the physics of this place is different than regular physics. There's not water. Closest thing to water is the orange ether, which is like globular. Um, you need it in ships to, to run it, but you also need yellow ether to run ships, which is like electric and fiery. Red ether is kind of like solid and you use that as foundations for things. So there's seven ether elements basically and they compound everything in the world. And so it's, it basically has its own system. Like the whole universe is like floating on a, on orange and red ether and there's yellow ether floating around all over the place. And you, you'll have stuff to gather this stuff. I'm just trying to do a really rough explanation hopefully that's just like kind of a, a very broad stroke of what I'm working on right now which is it's pretty exciting um, let me jump back into it because there's some other things I could show so right now I'm kind of been working on this is grass <laughs> so I want there to be plants and then there's animals that feed on the plants um, you can't eat animals there's no violence there's no killing I'm not even gonna have death for your players like that's why also the birth rate will be very throttled there have to be certain conditions in order for more birthing which is probably relatable to the players there can be a certain amount of players um, but I was just working with a little bit of the environment here uh, oh yeah if I make, press space I can make some orange ether I mean each ether, ether orange ether is going to be dynamic it's going to be moving around it's going to be bouncing it's going to be fl uh, attracted to itself and make into bigger bubbles um, and then if you pass it you should be able to collect it as a character or or monsters should be able to collect it too and the plants need to collect it too so um, different birth different um, animals will help spread it and be part of how the, the area grows and stuff so these are just some preliminary things oh here's some expressions <laughs> it's not really much but mad cry unamused and then there's shock Anime shock. <laughs> oh yeah, right now you can type too. Hello. So I could run this and you can effectively run around and talk to each other. Yeah, there's so many things to work on. I'm, but I might work on the multiple different kind of characters. Maybe a few clothes. I kind of want to get it to a build that people would be wanting to play. And then have it up. That would be cool. So if you have any input, any ideas, I mean, feel free to shoot them up. I have a... A discord for that if you're interested I can add you to the discord and yeah hopefully make a really cool game if you know anybody who'd want to help in any way actually too I mean I'd be open to any uh, collaboration so thanks for watching hope you keep in tune with 60% cat 60 cat